Well, I want to welcome you back to another video about CT numbers and Hound Field units. In this, we're going to take a little deeper dive. And whether you're studying for the Part 3 the Therapeutic Medical Physics exam or you're curious on just heterogeneity corrections and how to use the treatment planning system and your CT to correctly calculate dose for radiotherapy, this video is for you. So first, the thing to know is you take a CT, whether it's a phantom or a patient, and the CT takes that image, reconstructs it, and divides that into voxels, which it then assigns CT numbers called Hounsfield numbers or units, which is designated by this H. So a Hounsfield unit is calculated by taking the linear attenuation coefficient, that's this mu, that's the linear attenuation coefficient of the tissue in question minus that of water divided by water times 1000. So one Hounsfield unit means that if you, a typical Hounsfield unit for water is zero. If you have a Hounsfield unit for one, that means that there's a change of 0.1%. So in most tissues, and we're talking about soft tissues, uh, we're gonna have a Hounsfield unit of approximately zero. Same for water. And once we start getting to more dense materials, say bone, we're looking at more of around a thousand. And for vacuum, for air, would be negative 1,000. So, Obviously, when you're looking at soft tissues in the body, lung is going to have a lower value because it's more like vacuum, it's more like air than it is water or tissue. So it's gonna have a negative Hounsfield unit, something more dense, maybe like a liver, something like that, it isn't exactly gonna be zero, it's gonna be a little more, and then bone obviously will be the highest. So to calculate dose, for radiotherapy, the first thing we have to do with our CT is we have to find these Hounsfield units for all materials and we use that using a Gamex Phantom. Because finding a CT number is great, but actually what we really want is our electron density and we're going to use that for our heterogeneity corrections. So for the most part, our CT numbers and our electron densities are linear. So this is a rough sketch of an electron density curve, but the one in your clinic is going to look very similar. And so from negative 1000, over here on the y-axis we have CT number, from negative 1000 to around zero, maybe 100, we're going to have a linear curve. But there's a point in all of your electron density curves where that linear portion is going to trend upward. It's no longer going to be linear. It's going to look something similar to this. And that is because the atomic number in the tissues changes and causes that nonlinearity. So typically from negative 1000 to zero to 100, that's typically lung to soft tissue, that is where you're going to see a linear portion of the curve. But once you hit soft tissue going into denser materials like bone, you're going to see that the attenuation between the Compton and the photoelectric interactions changes, and that is what causes this nonlinear portion of this curve. So at this point, we've scanned a phantom, and that Gamex phantom is just a circular phantom like this, and it has a bunch of plugs in it. And all these plugs, PMMA, acrylic, water, bone, there's just all types of different plugs and materials that they know the electron density of. So you scan it, your, your CT assigns that a CT number, and because, say, water should be zero. Say your CT says that, I don't know, it, it's two. Say it could be a little off, that's perfectly fine, every CT is different, but you know what the electron density of water is, or acrylic, or PMMA, or bone, whatever your phantom that you purchased in, we've, they've run tests, it's verified what the electron density is, 
your CT number is going to be associated with that electron density. So that is how you get this entire curve. So you have now, you have this curve, you have your electron densities and your CT numbers. So the reason we care so much about the electron density is that the Compton interactions, which are the primary interaction for radiotherapy dose in the MV range, is related to the electron density. So in our treatment planning system, we are going to put this graph into whether it's Brain Lab or Eclipse or Pinnacle, whatever system we're using. And that is going to look at the structure, that CT and what that beam is going through. It's going to say, okay, I'm going through lung. Lung has this CT number. This CT number is has this electron density. It is then going to use that electron density to help with the probability of Compton interactions and overall account for the heterogeneity correction for that plan and that CT specifically. So that all of this is a very crucial step in radiotherapy because if this curve is incorrect, then you are miscalculating dose to a certain percentage on every time that you're calculating dose, whether it's a phantom or an actual patient. So that is why we have QA to test for CT. So the, the first test that we have daily we scan a phantom and it has some plugs in it that we know this what the ct number should be because we did that when we commissioned the ct we test it there's also other things such as lasers and uh, positioning that we also test daily too but for the realm of this discussion the big thing is the daily we do test ct number of water and the most common materials uh, second we also do a monthly and that is a more exhaustive daily QA. Essentially, we scan a phantom, we import it into the treatment planning systems, we verify that the CT number for water is zero, plus or minus 10, acrylic, PMMA, bone, all these things lung. We verify that the treatment planning system and the CT are assigning that correct CT number to a certain range because CTs over time potentially, they may read it differently, they're complex machines and you may need service if it's starting to drift for CT numbers. And finally, uh, annually, what you're going to want to do is actually take this Gamex Phantom, completely scan it again, and verify that your electron density curve hasn't changed. Again, sometimes there's drift or different issues that you may need serviced for, but typically I've never seen one be off. However, you definitely need to test that annually because it is such a crucial step in radiotherapy. So thanks for watching. If you have any other questions, please comment below. Or if you have a topic that you would like discussed and a video be made of, please uh, comment below. This is actually why I did this video. A uh, person mentioned they wanted a more in-depth discussion of CT numbers. So uh, it helps me just as much you. So if you have any questions or topics of discussion, please let me know. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.